everyone. So I'm Serena Tarkanian. I'm president of the CLUE organization, which stands for the Community Lighting for the Urban Environment. And at CLUE, we organize an international lighting design competition that's geared towards students and young professionals from the field of design. Um, so we organize this competition because we want to foster new ideas in the lighting design profession, but also we want to get young designers excited about the lighting design profession by actively learning about the importance of lighting in their communities. So this year we launched our third edition of the competition under the theme One for Light, Light for All, uh, which tackled the very, very complex notion of personalization of public spaces through lighting design projects. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you this year's uh, three winning teams who were selected by a jury of seven really high profile professionals from the industry, including Philip's head of design, Pierre-Yves Panis. And you're about to hear uh, about the three winning projects um, who are the really the best of the, of the best. We had over 330 projects that were submitted. And so the third prize was awarded to Helena Trias and Samuel LaGuarda from Spain with their project Wheel Light. Second prize awarded to the project Shape Shifting Lights, uh, which was proposed by Mina Sadarfad, Zahra Hagi, Hamid Pero, and who are also based in Iran, so a very international competition. And finally, our first prize winner of this edition is Andras Dankazi of Ireland with his project Collective Polyphony. And so in a short while, the winners are going to share with you all the details of the projects. And I, I truly hope that you're going to be as excited about these uh, amazing ideas as we are here at Clue. And if you like what you see, you can always uh, go ahead and check out our website, uh, cluecompetition.com, for more details. And we're also, of course, on social media. So enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone around the world. My partner Samuel and I are so happy to present today our awarded project, We Light. And we would like to thank the organization and the Phillips Lining University and all their members for inviting us and giving us this opportunity. And we are glad to have all of you here today. First of all, we would like to show you the world at night from abroad. And the main topic of this year the competition was wonderful light and light for all. And talking about light, we realized some shadows and darkness in this world and in this daily night image that remarks that more than 1.2 billion people globally live without electricity regular access. And looking closer to the reality of the African continent uh, that has been named Dark Continent many times, and we realize that it's a public territory where more than 79% of its population does not have this electricity guarantee, and, and this situation conditioning uh, to daily activities. Um, of the people in Africa. And this represents today more than 600 million people of Sub-Saharan. And as, as we said, daily activities are, are lighted in many occasions by little candles or also in, in some villages with kerosene oil lamps. And this situation is, is giving Africa this, this future, no? this future in this industry of technology and, and developing countries are increasing these energies and, and we need and we think to about to guarantee renewable and sustainable and also alternative energies for the future of this development. And in, in this context, we start to think for this project about the possibility of self-produced power. So the start point of the project, of the light project, is one of the main goals that is empowering Africa. Uh, the name of our continent, no? then one of its potential and emerging one, it's the main power and this belongs to people. And when we think about people, uh, we are thinking about um, the children and the power of children in Africa. So we, we put the main, uh, the main end in the role that children play in African communities and in their families. And with this, um, action to, to look at the kids and look at the children in Africa, I realized that many African children around the continent were playing a, a traditional game that um, belongs to, to taking elements that you can find on the streets. And in this example in the images, you know that the different size tires and they start to playing around uh, with, uh, with their friends, you know, and, and this belongs to a traditional game around the continent. 
and and this movement, no, as as we see this movement, um, it's giving a, a generation of energy, no, and this energy in the from children can can com be converted to electricity also, and as we see in, in other many many projects around the world. Uh, so we think to to join this movement and all this action from the kids with a well-known technology that is the dynamo. Then we have been using the European countries in many times in bicycles to produce energy and little lights for for to have a safe path for the bicycle. And and we can see here that this physical relation between the movement, the dynamo, and how the transmission of the movement becomes electric energy that can lights and, and, and has powered itself just by the use of, of this tire and, and this wheel. So so we light project joins in in the main part, the circular elements of the wheel that um, give us the, the opportunity to, for the movement, the dynamo technology that has been used in bicycles and this efficient and, and diode lights and working together as a generator. When, when we are talking about this um, generation, one of the most important parts of these joint elements become the stick that permits the use uh, by the children and by the adults also. And we have seen before this, we have seen in the traditional game that the stick is the element and permits to, to roll better no, and faster, so to, to generate more power. So when we when we design this and of fit engine, we, we also say that we like this is both dynamic for one part, so you have the element and the movement and the generation and then the static actions, no? So we can this we are valuing this its versatility of the project and also the flexibility for different uh, activities that we have can have during the day and the most important thing during the night. So we are doing um, longer the, the time activities in the villages. So with this project, uh, we are, of course, generating uh, closer and new relationships between rural uh, villages because we are provoking that people can stand longer uh, during the night times and they can, they can meet and they can learn from one and, and another, and they, they can share experiences. So life becomes the center of this of this um, community meetings. So so we we can see that this um, these actions between the community um, are better with better quality and and are more more joyful by by adding this this light around. You no, know? and for a uh, for another part, we are also with this project trying to um, empower the children itself, so doing their activities, work uh, after school, and also all the, the long path that they have to go to school. So the children themselves are are um, generating you know, a, a, a better uh, a better environment to develop their activities. And so, as we present in the project and the competition, and also the project, but with this this conversion from the joy of playful to the to the power of the of the kids, and, and as we said at the beginning, the kids are the the power for the future in in Africa. So, with this, we we will conclude in a little bit, and and we are glad to explain and, and thank you very much for the recognition that follows this power of children in the community. Uh, thanks to Clue uh, community and Clue organization for uh, giving us this uh, opportunity. Uh, this is our uh, project, it's called Shape Shifting Lights and uh, it's mainly inspired by uh, a current and future urban condition. Uh, this photo is taken from one of the smallest apartment buildings uh, in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, uh, this is the estimation of the urban population growth in, uh, in about 15 years. And uh, it is estimated that by 2030, the world is projected to have 41 mega cities with uh, over 10 million inhabitants. And uh, this, as a result, this dense urban areas will face numerous challenges in meeting their 
uh, needs in energy and uh, residential needs. You can also see two uh, graphs here uh, showing the sharp rises in housing price and residential energy consumption in dense urban areas. Um, and so this is the result. These two photos uh, are taken from some uh, really tiny living units in Hong Kong, East Asia. And you can see the compressed form of living uh, that is starting to happen. So uh, we can sum up with uh, these uh, results that uh, the increase in urban population and urban density and uh, sharp rise in housing prices and uh, energy consumption will uh, lead to decrease in living area per person and uh, will produce a limited private area for everyday activities. So our main question in this competition was uh, how can we meet this challenge in future? So the question is how can architectural lighting design transfer, transfer the private space experience to urban space? So uh, we compared the uh, main lighting features of public space and private space. And uh, as you can see, in private space at your right, uh, we have concentrated lighting for individual activities. The light is adjustable and uh, it, it creates a private experience. Uh, on the other side, in public lighting, uh, we have diffuse lights for public activities. The light is non-adjustable and uh, it creates a collective experience. Our question was, uh, how can lighting design through architectural thinking can uh, lead to a design that can intervene both experiences, produce an adjustable lighting program, and also offer a concentrated lighting plan in public spaces. So these are our main design objectives. Um, we wanted to produce a performative and dynamic urban installation that uh, should be adaptable and flexible and could be reprogrammed and adjusted by people. And we wanted to reach a simple form but a sophisticated program. Uh, it should be able to be prefabricated and reproduced easily. Uh, it should save energy and also maintain its functionality during the day. So uh, our design, our main design concept, uh, conclude, uh, include uh, two main uh, parts. For the part, former part, we came up with a dynamic modular system that uh, could be uh, configured in different assemblies and layouts. And uh, during our research for the, uh, for the competition, we came up with two technological breakthroughs. Uh, it, said it was use of SMPs and use of two DLEDs that I uh, we'll try to explain. Uh, SMPs or shape memory polymers are polymeric smart uh, materials that have the ability to return uh, f from a deformed state to their original shape uh, induced by an external stimulus such as temperature or force. QDLEDs or quantum dot light emitting diodes are uh, super small particles that you could emit light uh, when, uh, when connected to specific frequencies like uh, light, uh, light, light or electricity. So these are, this, this is the uh, photo that uh, we came to, we, we face. And uh, so we uh, decided uh, to come with a concept and combine these two technologies. So we came up with our shape-shifting panels. This is the main idea of the project. These shape-shifting panels uh, are attached to volumes of transparent shape memory polymers that are embedded with uh, these tiny particles that emit light. So uh, during daytime, it maintains its, its shape, but uh, by the night and uh, by the electricity current, 
it begins to heat up and uh, by the force of the people and pulling it uh, can change shape and uh, maintain its shape by night air and so uh, with the uh, rise of the sun and uh, start of the day it will uh, go back to its original shape. Uh, for the next stage uh, and step of the design, we came up with our module uh, shape and uh, we, uh, we designed our panels. Uh, we came up with an L-shaped panel that could be easily handled. Uh, it could be uh, put in the, uh, different organizations and configurations and also used as, uh, as an urban furniture because of its shape. This is the final proposed paneling configuration that is uh, super simple and symmetrical to uh, make the prefabrication easy. These are the renderings of the uh, assembly of the panels. You can see that the uh, specific configuration of the panels uh, allows the users to uh, use them in different uh, manners and uh, they could be used as top of urban furniture or adjustable lighting devices. This is the final design uh, distribution of the pattern uh, and uh, you can see we have three uh, types of modules. In this exploded diagram, you can see that the panels are designed in three categories. Uh, the fixed panels on, uh, on the right hand side the upper panels are uh, are designed to maintain the overall shape of the prototype. Uh, the shape shifting panels, the sh panels that we uh, discussed earlier, uh, are the panels that uh, induce light. And the the third part are the sliding furniture panels that could be easily pulled out according to people's needs for a concentrated. Uh, lighting or private space experience. And uh, below you can see the, the big frame structure that holds all the panels together. This is a technical diagram of the whole uh, prototype. You can see uh, that uh, you can see inside of the prototype in this uh, exploded diagram. And uh, you can see the different parts of the uh, a structure in this section. So this is the last, uh, this is the final rendering of, rendering of the prototype. It is worth mentioning that uh, because of the modular uh, nature of the design, uh, these panels could be arranged in different shapes and uh, volumes and could be also attached to uh, different surfaces of uh, urban uh, areas or architectural uh, facades. You can see in this renderings that people could uh, move and reshape the panels and the whole installation according to their concentrated uh, lighting and uh, private space experience. Uh, this was our presentation. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Anders Donkazi, and I'm going to present my project, Collective Polyphony, to you. First, I just quickly want to introduce you to the place that inspired this project. Um, Scotsman Bay is uh, in Dundee, which is kind of like south of Dublin in, in Ireland. It's the central part of the small town, and um, it's, it's the pocket of space that's abandoned at the moment. There's um, quite a few complicated sets of staircases and ramps that lead you down to the shores where you can go out to concrete jetties. Um, everything is, is very dilapidated at the moment and um, not many people visit it. Only a few venture out to experience the sea there. And uh, the idea was really to try to find or come up with an answer to to get people to go there again and rediscover this place. And um, so the idea was to design a light 
fitting that is large in scale and durable and can withstand the waves. Um, and this is what, what you see on this slide is, is kind of like the, the, one of the, the mock-ups and it just shows that it's a concrete fitting that can be walked on and it, it may be a bit more refined than, than what's there at the moment. Concrete wise it's board marks so it will kind of play with how the, the water drains down on it and it will pick up light in, 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 in beautiful ways. And then uh, obviously if we talk about light then, then the first thing that was uh, kind of a, a, an easy answer to come up with, where do I want to cast the light and, and what am I interested in in this light? And um, the point was to cast the light on the waves as they meet this, these new structures that I placed into the site so that um, when you're there and light hits those waves, it's really kind of unique in that moment. So even if you're there for 10 minutes, it's, it's almost definitely sure that you're not going to see the, the same lighting effect again. And um, then I did kind of a series of studies of, this, of these light fittings, you know, uh, painting these digital images uh, superimposed onto the site and kind of tried to figure out you know, what would be the effect that I would like to get. And, um, if you're in a, an environment like this, then everything is on, almost always constantly moist. So even if you cast the light onto the surface of the sea, the sea and, and all the surrounding objects are going to pick it up. Um, and when I, I was kind of happy with this part, like how the light distributes, then I started thinking about, okay, but what color should this light be? And um, luckily, uh, there's a smart boy in, in Dublin Bay that kind of records all the maritime data, like uh, the wave height, uh, the wave periods, the, the tidal levels, and, and this, the, the temperature of the sea. And many of these things can be set to, to, to influence the light. Like, for example, the, the wave heights and the wave period can uh, influence the intensity and then all the other parameters can do different things and I, I had a more detailed look into this um, what you see here on this slide is kind of like a one of the first steps that you would do when you start to visually program for 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 a light show like this something that interprets the, this data from the the, the 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 boy and then I guess the more time I spent doing this um, it was kind of clear that this system, even though it, it, it's, it is depending on a lot of variables, it's quite self-contained. So um, then I started thinking about controls. And um, the controls are very simple and basic things, just exposed circuits integrated onto existing landscape elements. So that, you know, again, you touch these things and you start to rediscover the site physically as well. And uh, basically, they operate just with, with uh, measuring the, the resistance of the human body, which is unique to each individual. And how do these controls work? Uh, I mean, the, the larger the surface area of, of your hand or, or your skin that touches it, um, the different uh, input it's going to give into the system. And um, these resistances from different bodies, they can be added up together, so many people can influence the same light at the same time. And um, I guess in the next uh, image you see one of these events when someone touches the light controls. And, and from this moment, I guess the, the thinking was that if you can have one light fitting and you can uh, influence it with many controls, then you can have many light fittings and they can start to interact with one another. And um, in a way, there's going to be this constant interplay between the controls, the sea, and I, I hope that people would reconnect to this place. So this is collective polyphony.